Once the chemical peptide dissolves, the nervous system cell will once again have an empty dock, a hole in its form. It will cause it not to work correctly until the dock is once again sealed. We understand this feeling of our nervous system cells being unable to function correctly due to unsealed docks, holes in the form of the cells, most often as withdrawal effects, a particularly unpleasant state. During this withdrawal state, the nervous system will inform the immediate consciousness of the cell's chemical need by refining specific energy dynamics, thoughts, about the problem. The problem for the mind or the consciousness then becomes where to obtain the communication energy needed to justify the hypothalamic release of the chemical in question. We can ask another person to communicate the appropriate attitude towards us or we can self-create the attitude and allow the nervous system to accept our own self-created energy as truth and request the appropriate chemical to be released. The problem with making our own energy dynamics to deceive the nervous system by communicating our own attitudes towards ourself is it unbalances our natural flow of life energy and affects the accuracy of our perception energy and therefore the level of actual truth in our consciousness. Such unbalance causes much disruption to our own well-being and health. The desynchronized flow of our own life energy, the energy we use to create our thoughts, then becomes a problem we have to manage and it isn't always easy. We can become bound by the cells of our nervous system to use certain thoughts and attitudes to create our regular consciousness in order to be sure that the appropriate chemicals that our nervous system now requires in order to function adequately are released. Some have noticed this process of manipulating our own thoughts and degrading our own perception as a means to initiate a temporary chemical response in our nervous system as the original sin we are all born with and we are of course all expected to use our lives to learn to overcome. Our nervous system cells become addicted to particular chemical peptides. This in turn requires us to think with certain ever present attitudes and ensure that our own nervous system cells have the chemical peptides they require in order to function adequately. This placement of parameters on what we think and how we think it has a devastating effect on our personal ability to think freely and therefore to learn and grow to our potential. Many people become unable to achieve psychological self-actualization during their lifetime because of long-term emotional addictions. We all select different attitudes that will become our own emotional addictions and block our ability to perceive and think freely. As we grow up and learn to change and alter which attitudes might be ever present in our thinking, we will change and alter exactly which chemicals in the bloodstream we will become addicted to. Some people make effort to grow and become able to transcend the ever-present emotional attitudes by underpinning their consciousness with intellectual or intuitional attitudes and thoughts. The amplitude of life energy from these channels is too short to affect the cells of the nervous system and therefore too small to initiate potentially addictive chemical responses in the nervous system. Those who choose to do this are able to live with very few emotional addictions. These people will always report that the freedom of their consciousness was well worth the effort in overcoming an emotional addiction. Overcoming a chemical peptide addiction is the same as overcoming any other chemical addiction. We must be able to first allow the nervous system cells to regenerate into a form that does not include a dock that needs to be sealed with the chemical in question. This means 
first going for a few weeks without allowing the chemical in question to be released into our bloodstream. This will ensure that the newly regenerated cells will be formed without the dock and therefore without the chemical need. This means going for a few weeks without using the attitude in our consciousness, our thinking, and without coming into contact with communication which contains the attitude that will initiate the chemical response into the bloodstream. The procedure sounds simple enough, but it is in reality extremely difficult. As well as the physical addiction in the nervous system, the cells themselves requiring healing, it is also possible that we have unknowingly impacted others with our overuse of certain attitudes and resultant behaviours caused by our unbalanced consciousness. Like all addictions, emotional addiction can be helped through the use of the traditional 12-step program. Made famous by Alcoholics Anonymous, the 12-step program is a tried and true method for regaining our balance of consciousness and therefore our inner peace and harmony which can be simply adapted to any addiction. If we use the essence of the 12 steps, as many do, to live by, we can lessen the impact the parameters of our emotional addictions have on our consciousness. We will be able to think more freely, perceive more clearly, and enjoy emotional energies we share with others more fully. Let's look at how the traditional 12 steps might be adapted for use with an emotional addiction. For example, the attitude of false pride. <laughs> 